Good afternoon, everyone in Japan, and good morning to those of you who are in Europe. I'm Yurita Rikomagar, country representative for EuroSouth Japan. A very warm welcome to this ERC funding info session. Let me introduce our first speaker. Gordana Popovic is scientific officer and panel coordinator at uh, ERCEA, and the title of her presentation is ERC funding opportunities and evaluation procedure. Before the commencement of her presentation, I'm going to say a few words as an introduction. The European Research Council, the instigators of this webinar, stimulate investigator-driven frontier research in Europe through competitive funding across all fields on the basis of scientific excellence. Both young and established scientists are eligible for this uh, research program to apply for these research grants. So which ERC grant scheme, scheme is best suited for your research project? You will find out more about these funding opportunities and open calls. You can get more detailed information on how to apply for each and every grant and how the applications are assessed. The main focus of this webinar is to introduce these ERC funding opportunities and additional support is offered by a hopefully lively Q&A. And uh, we will also include a testimony by Professor Akita, Akita Ariga, who is assistant professor at the University of Bern. Professor Akita Ariga will join us in about half an hour. So I would like to ask uh, Professor Popovic if uh, she could please proceed with her presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Judith. I will first share my screen and start my presentation in a few moments. Good morning to uh, participants uh, in Europe and good afternoon to participants in Japan. Um, my name is Gordana Popovic. Uh, I am panel coordinator and scientific officer at the European Research Council, uh, which is located in Brussels. And um, Today, I have the pleasure and the honor to present the European Research Council, the ERC funds, the funding schemes, and to say how you can participate in the ERC program. Um, the ERC, the European Research Council, has a budget of 16 billion euro in the Horizon Europe. Um, and um, the Horizon Europe program is the European Union Research and Innovation Program, which started 2021 with a duration until 2027. The 16 billion euro of the ERC that, that the ERC has uh, in the Horizon Europe represents 17% of the entire Horizon Europe budget. So it is a substantial budget and substantial funding. The ERC is governed by um, scientific council. This is an independent scientific council composed of 22 members, including the ERC president, president Dr. Maria Leptin. Um, these 22 um, scientific council members are high level researchers, very well known and um, uh, researchers who come from different parts of the world and they cover different areas uh, scientific uh, um, um, areas and um, the uh, scientific council is an independent body composed of researchers. This is why we say the ERC program is a program for researchers from researchers. The independent scientific council has full autonomy over the strategy. Um, that means establishing annual work programs, how the evaluations will take place and many more um, important strategic uh, decisions. The scientific council members are supported by a dedicated implementation structure, the ERC executive agency, and they um, get support from the ERC executive agency, which is located in Brussels, and I am uh, working there. So I'm sitting now in the building, which you can see on the right hand side. Um, the uh, role of the ERC executive agency, or we say ERCEA, is, um, as told, to support the uh, scientific council members um, to implement the um, 
annual work program to organize uh, peer reviewed international peer reviewed evaluations to um, uh, prepare the grants to uh, implement the grants and monitor the implementation of the grants to do amendments when necessary to follow up the research communicate and also disseminate uh, everything what is important to ERC stakeholders to also communicate with applicants and grantees. So there are many activities that we have at the uh, European Research Council Executive Agency. Um, the ERC program was a success story, which uh, is still a success story, which started in 2007 um, when it was created. And until now, there are more than 13,000 grants which were funded and um, that means also 13,000 grantees. Um, they come from 89, uh, they have 89 different nationalities so it is really a worldwide program, an international program. It is open to uh, any nationality. Um, um, there are no restrictions on nationality, on where you are located now, no restrictions on age, gender, so it is really a very open program and also no restrictions on topic. It is a bottom-up program, and I will say a little bit more about that. Um, the grantees are um, excellent researchers who have contributed that um, with their results that there are more than 220 articles published in scientific journals, uh, more than 2,400 patents. Um, and we are also very proud to say that among our ERC grantees, 14 have received the Nobel Prize. Six of them have received the field medals in mathematics, 11 Wolf Prizes and many more other prizes. Um, we see also that the ERC funding has enabled the um, ERC grantees to recruit researchers from all over the world. So there are uh, more than 19,000 researchers and other professionals which were employed in ERC research teams. And today I will say about three possibilities how you can participate in ERC grants. So one is, and I will start with um, this one, is to participate like a team member. The other possibility is to apply for a grant, prepare a proposal, submit the proposal to the ERC, um, and um, if the proposal and you are evaluated po positively, then you get the grant and then you are an ERC grantee. This is the second option. And there is also a third option, which I will explain at the end, is um, the possibility to simply visit the grants and the grantees and um, to um, also cooperate with them. So I will start with the um, possibility that you apply to an existing uh, grant um, that is running at the moment and um, you would like to work there as a researcher, as a team member. Um, I can tell you something about the statistics. So um, in Horizon 2020 grants and Horizon 2020 uh, program was between 2014 and 2020. Um, on a sample of 2000 grants, um, there were approximately 200 Japanese team members. Um, so in case you decide to do research in one of these existing grants, you can first check and see where are which are the grants which are running, which are funded. There are many options. One of them is that you um, consult our website and you see there um, you can filter by country, by grant type, um, by topics, panels, um, and um, there you will see um, which grants are running in which topics, in which health institutions, um, and um, then you can choose which of them are most interesting for you. The option is to directly go to the host institution website. Um, the majority of uh, the grants have also their own project websites 
um, and one other possibility is to to, to go to web uh, to um, Eurax's uh, job link uh, because um, usually also their uh, open positions for researchers in running grants are published. So get inspired by all these uh, possibilities and opportunities. Um, very often when you work in an uh, ERC grant as a team member, then also you get um, experience and um, we have often the case then that in that that the, the researchers um, then um, get in excellence they um, um, already uh, uh, get more maturity and then they um, apply for their own ERC grant but you don't need to be before in an ERC grant if, uh, as a team member um, you can be anywhere at the moment in another country, another continent, uh, in Europe, wherever, working in another place, and you can um, apply for an ERC grant already now. Why are the uh, ERC grants interesting? They are long-term grants, so duration is five years up to, so up to five years for the starting grants, consolidated data grant, and um, for the advanced grant, and for synergy grants, up to uh, six years duration. Um, the ERC grants are practically individual uh, or financing individual researchers from all over the world. Um, researchers who are doing pioneering projects, who have brilliant ideas, sparkling ideas. Um, usually the projects are have a high level of risk or a certain level of risk, but they also have a high gain if they are successful. And they can be in any field of frontier research, in life sciences, in physical sciences, in engineering, chemistry, social sciences, and humanities. Uh, we say uh, that um, this is a bottom-up program. That means that you can choose and um, submit a proposal in your research topic that you have chosen. So the European Research Council is not a top-down program where we tell what are the priorities? No. Uh, the European Research uh, uh, Council uh, grants are um, and program um, are uh, free in terms of uh, your choice, what you want to do, in which topic you want to, res uh, to do your research. The ERC offers um, high level of visibility, um, recognition and in independence. That means that you get the budget, uh, which is a substantial budget for the, for example, five years of your project. So the project can also be less than five years. It is you who will choose the duration of the project. But the majority of the projects use the possibility of having 16, 16 months, five years um, to do their project, uh, because usually the projects are ambitious. Um, but you get your financial autonomy. The grant belongs to you. That means that you have, as a grantee, the freedom to also move it, your grant to another host institution in um, European Union or an associated country. Um, when you get the grant, also that gives you good uh, basis to also negotiate uh, your conditions with the work and your research at the host institution but also to attract uh, excellent uh, researchers worldwide. So you will be able, you will have budget for to recruit, to finance also your team members, to establish your team, to consolidate to your team, or to extend your team. And there is a possibility to win additional funding, which is very appealing. That means when, you're, um, when you have a grant, an ERC grant, and you see that, um, it ha there is potential also to put it on the market. Uh, there is a, a lot of innovative uh, potential in your grant. Then you can apply for proof of concept projects. The five main schemes are in um, in the ERC uh, uh, program: uh, starting grants, consolidator grants, advanced grants, synergy grants, and proof of concept. So which of them is suitable for you will depend on your scientific uh, career stage, your maturity and the date 
or the date when you have finished your PhD. So the starting grounds are usually for um, researchers who are at the beginning of their scientific career, typically two to well uh, two to seven years after their PhD, um, and, and um, they need already to have some good results, at least one uh, publication, a peer-reviewed publication without their PhD supervisor. Um, and they should also be able to demonstrate that they have the capacity to do such a demanding project. Um, so if you apply, then please list what, are your, what you have done until now, where you have published, what you have published, um, make also clear where you have published um, as a major contributor. Um, those grants are up to 1.5 million euro for the duration of five years. If the duration is shorter, then also the maximum will be of the budget will be less, and this is um, scalable. But the maximum budget is up to 1.5 million for five years. Consolidated grants are for so researchers who have already um, who are already longer in research, um, 10 to 12 years after their PhD, they can apply for uh, up to 2 million uh, euro part of work time in Europe, but it is at least 50%. So if you work 50%, 51% in Europe, you still have a good portion that if needed, you can also uh, keep your affiliation in your home institution outside Europe. Uh, you can employ members that can also be based outside of Europe, uh, depending on the project. To show uh, some statistics and from 2007 to 2024, uh, um, less than 400 uh, applications, proposals from Japanese PIs were evaluated. The majority of them were in starting grants, then in consolidator grants. This is the pink uh, color. And uh, um, of course, uh, the lowest number of uh, proposals were um, in advanced grants. 44 uh, grantees with Japanese nationality have received a grant. Um, in the previous framework program, uh, so in FP7, which was 2007 to 2014, there were 14 Japanese um, um, grantees in Horizon 2020 from 2014 to 2020, 23 uh, grantees with Japanese nationality. And uh, in Horizon Europe, we started in 2021. Uh, Until now, we have seven grantees. Of course, the majority of them is located in host institutions in the European Union or in uh, associated countries. But one of the grantees is in Japan, so has received a synergy grant. And this is a Professor Kazu Suenaga at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. Um, together uh, with three other members, uh, team members in, from Austria, Italy, and Germany, the, he got um, the, uh, the, the uh, grantee got this uh, grant in the ERC Synergy 2020 call, and the project is uh, the project acronym is MORE TEM. The full title is Momentum and Position Resolved Mapping Transmission Electron Energy Loss Microscope. A very exciting research. So in case you decide to apply for, in, for an ERC grant, what is important? It is important to know that ex excellence is the only and sole evaluation criterion. Host institution is not evaluated. And also the success rate is not linked to the academic age. It is only the excellence of the research project and the excellence of the principal investigator. What is important to know is if we speak about excellence of the research project, then it is the groundbreaking nature and potential which is evaluated. The ambition of your uh, research work. How ambitious is your proposal? That's what you intend to do. Um, but also, it has to be feasible. So how 
feasible is that what you want to do? If there are risks, and there will be risks, also how you will mitigate what will be the plan B. Um, the excellence of the principal investigator is also here. And there you have to demonstrate impact capacity, creativity, commitment to the project, also um, your level of independence, of course, um, your level in the, of independence in uh, advanced grant has to be absolutely high, in consolidator grant also high, and um, there all, should also be a certain level of independence um, in starting grants. And independence here means independent from your supervisor, so that you demonstrate um, special recognitions, please also list them. To do is also to select the panel where you want to apply your proposal. Um, we see we have three domains in the European Research Council program, life sciences, physical sciences and engineering, and social, social sciences and humanities. There are 28 panels. And please, um, just it is important to know that this, um, the name of the panels, that are not priorities, not at all. The ERC does not have priority topics. Um, the uh, panels here and the names behind the panel uh, numbers, uh, they are important so that you can choose in which panel your proposal will be evaluated. That means um, each panel is composed of between 13 and 18 panel members who have specific expertise, which is covering the area uh, here, like P8, products and processes engineering. Um, there, please also see in the work program, each of these panels has, in addition, a granulation, meaning um, panel descriptors, which will help you to be sure if your proposal fits in the panel or not. Um, like in products and processes engineering, you will see chemical engineering, aerospace engineering, mechanical engineering, energy, computational engineering, and, and much more. Um, so it is important to select the right panel, but also to uh, you can choose a second panel in case your project is interdisciplinary. So also when you prepare your proposal, um, you will need to write part B1 and also part B2. Why um, this is important, you prepare both part B1 and part B2 at the same time and submit, submit them at the same time. Um, the part B1, uh, this is the scientific part, B, scientific part. Um, in part B1, the part B1 will be evaluated in step one. The part B2 will be evaluated in step two. That means put everything what is important in part B1. Make very clear what you want to do in part B1. Because in step two, the panel members will not see uh, your part B2, only part B1. So spark curiosity, make them excited about what you want to do. Um, what you want to do, your idea should be um, beyond state of art, should be innovative, should be should have breakthrough character. So no incremental research, no further development of what you have done um, or continuation of your usual work. Um, the, um, it is important also that you say where is the science now in this area to give the state of the art. Uh, to say what are the risks, um, to also say how you want to do your project, in which way, so what are the objectives, what are the tasks you want to address, how you want to do that. Um, but be concise, please, please, and be very clear. Um, usually what is not well perce perceived is if the PIs, the applicants, is using too much of jargon and passwords. So be very specific, be very clear what you want to do. Um, write the proposal in a clear way because panel members are some very often or usually they're experts in this topic, but sometimes they're also generalists. So you have to convince the experts and also the generalists and to make clear what you want to do. Part B2. Um, 
yes, what I want to say also in part B1, there is, um, you will describe your scientific part and also you will place there your, uh, what you have achieved, your practically track record, your achievements, uh, what you have published until now. So there, there will be one part for the scientific part and one for the PI description. Um, in part B2, there you uh, put more uh, information um, which should not overlap too much, should not be really absolutely identical what you have in part B2 because you have limited space. So um, the evaluators, the panel members and remote referees, the experts will get in step two both part B1 and part B2 to read. So use the space to uh, and avoid repetitions, um, but use the space to go give more detail on the state of the art, to speak more extensively on the methodology and your work plan, to do uh, in more detail the um, risk analysis in mitigation plans, um, and also to explain the involve of, involvement of your team. And very important if it's an um, if this is um, a project which has uh, interdisciplinary character and you don't cover all areas, then make clear how you will complete the expertise with your team members so that you have the entire expertise for an interdisciplinary project uh, in your team. So you and the team should cover everything that is needed and also to justify the resources. Um, what is important also that you get a letter, support letter from the host institution, um, that you um, make sure that you are eligible. Um, and um, eligible means um, the eligib there is the eligibility also in terms of the uh, when you have done your PhD, in fact, when you have defended your PhD. Um, please. Uh, check carefully the eligibility rules, and there is also po possibility to extend the eligibility window, uh, meaning that if you were on maternity leave, paternity leave, in military, if uh, there was absence because of long-term illness, and there are several um, reasons why and how you can extend this eligibility window so that uh, you can apply, for example, in starting round, or you can still apply in consolidated round. Register early, do it on time, and we suggest that you um, work on your um, proposal. You can always upload it and you can always upload the new version on the platform. Be careful uh, with the deadline because the deadline is um, given on one exact date and precise time. So it doesn't mean that, uh, that on that date until midnight uh, it is open. No, the platform will be closed on the specified date and specified time, but this is Brussels time, so be careful with the deadline. Um, in case you pass to step two, then prepare well for the interviews, do some mock interviews with your colleagues, colleagues train well, and respect what you get from the ERC uh, in terms of the limit of time for your presentations and how long the questions and answers will take. The quest questions and answer sessions in the uh, interviews uh, are a possibility for you to present your project. So please avoid to have very long answers. Be very precise. Uh, give the possibility to answer as many questions as possible, because in this way, all the questions will be clarified. And this is your interest, that if the panel members were not sure about something, were doubting something, this is the possibility for you to clarify um, everything in the interview. So this is why we always say, be concise, be precise, be precise in your answers. And if your proposal is rejected, rejected, please try again. You will get a complete feedback from the ERC, from all individual assessment, and also from the, from the panel, uh, the panel comments. And based on that, you can rewrite and um, you can um, make another, a better proposal when you try again. So there are many possibilities to train uh, in the um, in our website. Um, so how, for example, what to consider before you apply, how to fill in the application forms, how to prepare for the interview, um, and many more other tricks and, tricks and tips and 
good advices. It is important. It's very interesting. It's um, important that you see these videos. Um, there is the link and um, you will see if you go to our website, it's very easy to find the videos, the ERC classes. Um, the call start, um, the call that is running now is the one in advance grant. It was opened end of May and the deadline is 29th of August. Please see the exact time. Um, the starting grant 2025 uh, will be the call will be opened uh, beginning of July, so very soon in a couple of days. Uh, the um, consolidator grants, the tentative opening of the call will be in September. And for synergy grant, also very soon in the next couple of days in July, there will be uh, the opening of the call for the synergy grants uh, 2025. Um, I want finally say only a few words at the end of my presentation about ERC implementing arrangements. So in case you decide you already um, have an important uh, position in Japan, in your research environment, but you would like to get a glimpse on what are the ERC projects, how they are done, you want to visit the project, or you want to collaborate with, with an ERC team, and you want to work with an ERC team. In that case, um, you can make use of this implementing arrangement possibility. This ERC implementing arrangements in Japan were signed with three uh, institutions in 2015 with Japan Society for the Promotion of Science, in 2018 Japan Science and Technology Agency, and 2020 Japanese Agency for Medical Research. And until now, you see, uh, the number of the visiting researchers who have made use of this opportunity. Um, in that case, you keep your affiliation and your position in, in Japan. Um, you um, get from the non-EU agency, that means from the agency in uh, Japan, um, you will um, get um, contribution to continue your payment, your salary payments and scholarships. The um, agency will cover your research, health insurances, and cover the international travel expenses. And some of the agencies, you have to check that with them, also cover travel expenses of the accompanying family members. So it is a very interesting possibility to get the glimpse. And it is also important because then um, you can see how the ERC program and grants are working, uh, what is important, and that also gives you. Um, also some, um, in a way, inspiration to also apply one day for an ERC grant. Thank you so much for um, listening to this presentation. Uh, more information you can see on our uh, website, the ERC website, on, and on this um, arrangements, the last the visiting uh, arrangements, the possibilities. You can also see on our website, there are um, a there is a specific link for that. Um, thank you so much, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much for the very extensive presentation. I'm sure that our attendees are going to walk away uh, with lots of um, useful bits that will help them apply for this very prestigious ERC grant. Next up, I would like to welcome Professor Akita Gariga from the University of Bern who will talk about unlocking the frontiers of particle physics with ERC. Professor Akita Gariga, if you could please proceed with your presentation. In the meantime, I would also like to encourage our attendees to please post your questions in the Q&A box, not in the chat, um, and then they will be answered right after the speakers uh, conclude their presentations. Thank you. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Perfect. Yes. Uh, hello, this is uh, Akitaka Ariga from University of Bern. So the, I got ERC in the call of 2020. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to share my experience here. And uh, yeah, I show also my, show my research. Okay, so my 
acronym of my project is Phaser New. This is and this ERC Phaser New project, and this uh, exploit uh, the world largest accelerator at CERN, Geneva. It is called LAC accelerator to study neutrinos. This is a part of the <coughs> fundamental particles uh, as you can see on the right. So the uh, a neutrino is a small part of the particle series, and it's small, but uh, it's quite important part in the particle physics. And the LHC accelerator is a huge accelerator. The size, the circumstance is 27 kilometer, and uh, this is uh, uh, located at uh, Jujiba. Then the so this is the center of particle physics in the world. However, uh, up to my proposal, there's no neutrino has ever been observed. So my proposal is uh, to unlock high energy frontier of particle physics by my project with this accelerator and study neutrino. And and this is the first neutron experiment at particle collider. And it was clearly beyond the state of the art and uh, excellent project, I believe. <laughs> yes, that was uh, my proposal. And uh, I proposed this to the ERC. And how it come? So uh, I was originally already in University of Bern, Switzerland. And uh, it was easy just I uh it was actually not trivial but uh, i set host institution as the university of Bern. You, usually you are uh, suggested to change institute even if you are in europe uh, but uh, now i had good reason because uh, there's technic technical station in the university okay in 2019, I, I had this great idea, and I made a proof, proof of concept. And then um, particle physics, usually we have a big international collaboration. And uh, actually, I made and led an international group, group of people, and then did all the calculation, feasibility studies, and talked to the facility son for an experiment. And then as you... Uh, here, I made a grant proposal. It was a legacy proposal, five pages plus 15 pages. And uh, luckily, I was interviewed uh, by the uh, ERC, and I went to the Brussels. The, but then, in this call, evaluation was it's a variable idea. However, the ERC required, so the suggestion was need more serial calculation or uncertainties of experiment. And also it was said uh, this person is enough excellent so that this project is not enough challenging. That was a very funny statement for me, but uh, so ERC requires uh, challenges. So uh, it's not only state of the art, but it's a unique challenge. Uh, and the project hasn't been approved by some. Then the result was uh, the, yeah, it was positive. Enough high quality to be fundable, but not ranked sufficiently high to be funded. So rejected. Uh, having, but I didn't give up. So the next year, 2020 call, I applied again. And I did the uh, analysis of uh, pilot test, the uh, proof of concept uh, test, and then did more serial cal calculation and write a paper already, and then uh, get approved by SAN, then the made official international collaboration. Yeah, this is uh, the sketch of, the, of my project with uh, work packages. Then had uh, it was interviews. So I installed everything. Very complicated setup in the in office. 
with nice camera, nice light, and nice microscope. Then, uh, then during the interview, so it was said that so during the interview, you should have uh, change the conversation with the reviewers and yourself, and uh, you should have some chemistry between the reviewers and yourself during this interview. So something should be changed. And uh, I think I managed to do this. And so uh, reviewers uh, are quite interested in my project and uh, made quite a lot of questions I answered concisely and at the end it was a success after that uh, uh, getting uh, the grant i carried out uh, the proposed projects uh, and uh, it, well, this is the pictures of the experiment and this is my detector and this is my team in university of Bern and also international collaboration and yeah, this project was already started in 2021, and I received already new results uh, last year with the first observation of electron neutrino at LSG, and now the new result of the first physics result uh, will be published in 10 days. So I think uh, it's a great uh, success for the proposal, and also the project is ongoing very well. So uh, what I can say to you is, uh, so try, otherwise you will have no chance. And uh, have a great scientific idea, but probably that's not enough. And uh, yeah, uh, you present, it's really a challenge and beyond the state of the art. And the project, uh, I think it should be benefit for EU or synergy with EU, that's uh, I think, uh, important it's not only excellent science but uh, should be connected to the eu and prepare your, yourself to grab the small chance yeah you need preparation okay that's it thank you so much i think that was also very informative and uh, also the fact that you actually have shown true stamina you know you have tried more than once i think it's a great example for those who are discouraged you know by failure or by um, lack of acceptance and uh, i find it very very inspiring so thank you for that we already have two questions in the q a box i believe the first one is to uh, Professor Popovich, is it mandatory to have a PhD degree to apply for ERC grant? It's in the Q&A box, the first question. Uh, for starting grants and for uh, consolidated grants, it is mandatory. Uh, for advanced grant, it is not mandatory. But um, from experience, I have not seen such cases that somebody without a PhD has got an ERC, grant, uh, ERC starting grant, uh, advanced grant. So for starting grants and consolidated grants, the PhD is mandatory. Thank you so much. The second question, I believe, also goes to you. Thank you for the informative presentation. You mentioned that the proposal should not be an extension of previous research. Should we look for a trade-off between previous experience and new applications, or is it encouraged to propose something outside our field of expertise? Thank you. Um, so it is not um, it is not good if you propose something which is outside of your field of expertise, because then the question will be: um, Can the project be implemented? Is it feasible that um, you as grantee without really knowledge uh, and background in, in the area that you really can do that. You will not convince the panel members about that. What is meant by um, it should not be a, a straight continuation of your work, like, you know, um, you have worked on something and then uh, now you want to just uh, do a little bit more and do, do develop something that you already have done. So this 
further development of something is too incre it is incremental it is not breakthrough of course what you do should be in your area should be based on what you have done should be based on your background and expertise because you have to convince the panel members that you have the capacity to do the research the necessary ingredients to do what you want to do but uh, as as told um it should be something that is not a linear further incremental development of that what you have done it should be more ambitious thank you uh, professor Ariga, would you like anything to add i think uh, it's uh, uh, encouraged for the starting and part of the consolidator but i i don't think for advanced grant Thank you. And so you the, basically confirm, yeah, yeah from yes. your own experience as well. Thank you. Yes. Okay, the third question, um, when evaluating the capacity of a PI applying for an advanced grant, are questions like the number of PhD researchers supervised taken into consideration? Yes, for advanced grants. So for advanced grants, it is important that you also show and demonstrate your capacity as um, supervisor of PhD students and postdocs. There, it is important to demonstrate that. For starting grants, not, because usually uh, starting grantees or applicants are researchers at the beginning of their career. So there, um, the capacity to supervise uh, students, uh, PhD students uh, and, and so on, um, this is not important. It's not necessary to have that. For consolidator grant, it's also not necessary to have that. But in case you have done that, you can, of course, put that. But this is uh, not um, evaluated for starting grants and consolidator grant. But yes, for advanced grant. Thank you. We still have five minutes for questions. Those of you who have any kind of queries, now is the time to ask them. You get the answers in real time without having to wait for emails. Okay, here comes the next one. Following the questions about the continuation of research, should the focus be more on evaluating the capacity and skills of researchers or the research topics themselves? Uh, it is not the research topic that is evaluated because it is a bottom-up program. So all topics are welcome. It is the idea which is evaluated, the scientific merit of the idea. And that is that is the most important thing. So that what you propose, that it is challenging, it has breakthrough capacity, is innovative, is um, sparkling, is exciting research, which has risk some level of risk but if if you are successful it will end with high gain here we don't speak about economic gain as so, but about scientific gain technological gain um so it is the idea that should really be um that what you want to do your uh, extended synopsis has to be very clear and has to demonstrate that um that what you want to do is not something incremental, it's not a simple further development of something, but it's something new, it's something original, something challenging and, and ambitious. Um, and of course, then uh, the evaluation about the PI, uh, it should reflect uh, the capacity of the PI, that the capacity that the PI has the capacity to do the research that the PI has the right background to do the research. So this is why I told, uh, if you propose something which is completely out of your background and you have no knowledge in that, you will never convince the panel that to give you the grant. So it is important that you have the knowledge, the experience in that what you want to do. Um, if you have some lack uh, of some experience somewhere, then also look that your team members can cover that. Um, but as told, um, so in part B1, both is important, but uh, I would say it is more the focus on, on your idea and also 
to make clear that you as a researcher can do that, that what you want to do is feasible because you can do it. So the last one, if I may, is my proposed work cannot be finalized at a single institution. Can I have one host unit and an associate unit? Uh, the answer is yes. So you can do your work in your host institution and you can have a co-beneficiary. Um, another institution which also will get money directly from this grant, the co-beneficiary um, will support and help you to um, do the work. But this is not networking. It should not be a network. The, the ERC grants are not networking schemes. Um, they are for individual researchers. So the individual researcher has need to have the capacity to do the research and this work can be supplemented uh, and supported uh, by some other lab, some other group, whether as co-beneficiary or in a more loose way, in a more uh, general way as collaborator. So you can have collaborators. Thank you. And one last question that we have time for. What are the independence criteria to apply for starting grant? Just one paper without the PhD supervisor or more like papers as last author? Um, definitely you need uh, one paper without your PhD supervisor. And the more you explain uh, the level of your uh, independence, the better because this is a competitive scheme. You will have many competitors. And um, the better you are also as a PI, um, it is the better it is. So that means um, you should uh, have at least this one for independence, so demonstrate it, at least one uh, publication, peer-reviewed publication without the PhD supervisor. If you have more, the better. Uh, then also when you list your publications, um, it is it would be good uh, sometimes to the panel members, it is not clear uh, if you were, uh, what was the level of your contribution, if there are many uh, authors listed in the publication. So it's not, not clear, have you contributed to this like 80% or you just marginally worked on that. So it is important to, to write a short statement telling uh, so after you list the publication to say my contribution to that was essential and was on this part so to make also clear that um you um uh, what what is what is done by you um also if you have received awards if you have received some additional recognitions um invited speeches, for example, and so on. Also, that shows a level of um, a good track record and also of maturity. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, I believe the clarification uh, arrived to the, uh, the, the previous question that we had in the Q&A box. If I'm correct, applicants need to work in the EU or AC, that's associated country, in the requirements. But the researchers may change their working institutes to other countries out of the EU or associated countries during the five years. Is it allowed? That's the query in the Q&A box. Uh, no. So um, the... Um... Starting grants, consolidated grants, advanced grants, um, they need to be uh, implemented and done in a host institution which is established in European Union, uh, under the European Union law or in associated countries. Uh, you will see the list of associated countries in the work program. So um, that means if the host institution is outside of the European Union or outside of the uh, associated countries, uh, you cannot, uh, or uh, this other institution where you want to go, you cannot do that. So you can move with your grant to any institution, research institution, uh, but as long as it is uh, located uh, in European Union countries or associated countries. Um, 
exception is synergy grant where we have told there one PI can be from an institution from outside of Europe. Um, but for uh, the portability of the grants of starting consolidated and um, advanced grant, it is not possible to move the grant to a host institution outside. Uh, we actually have one more, but I think it's more of a remark. Thank you. The issue is that I need to spend almost half of my time on the research. I would like to know whether the associate unit can receive funding from the application. Yeah, it's a very brief comment and question. Uh, depending which scheme uh, you have, which type of grant you have, for starting grants, you need to uh, work on the project. So your full-time commitment for starting grants on the project should be should have a minimum of 50%. So that is the minimum. Usually it's more for starting grantees. But the minimum is 50% full-time commitment on the project. For uh, consolidated grantees, it's 40% uh, percent minimum. And for advanced grantees, 30% uh, minimum. But um, th so th this is the time commitment on the project. But um, the um, work uh, in uh, Europe, so you, uh, the, the researcher should spend at least half of the work time, so at least 50% of work time uh, in, the, in Europe, in European Union or in associated countries. Um, why this is important? Because also, um, you saw the, the researcher can then, uh, like, you have an advanced grant and you work only 30%, your time commitment on, is on this advanced grant, but still uh, you will do some other research so that you um, have this, um, that you have, that you spend at least 50% of time in Europe. So that, that is important. Uh, with exception of synergy grant for one PI, where the PI, one PI in uh, the grant per grant can be outside of Europe with host institution outside of Europe. This is synergy. But for other three schemes, um, uh, that are the percentages to be respected. Thank you very much. In the meantime, I'm afraid we have gravely run out of time. So we are forced to terminate the webinar right here. Any further questions will be forwarded to the speakers. You can reach us at japan at .net, or you can also send a question via LinkedIn, X, or Facebook. You can also follow us over there. Any further information will be shared by the Euroxess website on the event page. Thank you for coming today, especially our esteemed speakers for taking the time and the energy to have prepared their presentations and be present. I know all of you are very busy, so it is much appreciated. Thank you so much. And our attendees who stayed with us for more than an hour today. Thank you for your time and looking forward to seeing you in upcoming events. Goodbye.